The Republican budget is summed up in numerous op-eds, editorials around the country today. <clears throat> A couple of them, USA Today, the Republican budget relies heavily on huge and politically unlikely spending cuts and bewildering gimmicks that don't begin to add up. We have one out of the um, New York Times. I read it earlier today. Where the heck did that go? Um, anyway, all the editorials around the country say that the Republican budget is a hoax, a farce, a gimmick. And that's what it is. We've focused on uh, the first few hours of debate on this budget. We focused on the middle class. We're going to continue to do that. We are not relying on smoke and mirrors. Our, our numbers are realistic. We know that we need to do something about infrastructure. Of course, uh, Republicans disagree with that. We know we have to do something to help s struggling students and their parents on these loans that we, that, have, that we have outstanding. We have more student loan debt than we have credit card debt. We have to make sure that we don't lose sight of the fact that women should be paid the same amount as men for the same work. That's the difference between these two budgets. Senator Durbin. Middle income families in Illinois care about basics. Can you put your kid through college without too much debt? Take a look at the Republican budget. They basically cut back on opportunities for lower income students to go to college. Middle income families care about mothers, fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers who may be in a nursing home facility, may be facing a serious illness. Many of those elderly Americans rely every single day on payments from Medicare and Medicaid as well as Social Security to survive. And yet we see deep cuts in the Republican budget when it comes to Medicaid. And middle income families care about the next generation of Americans mm -hmm. as to whether or not their kids are going to have an opportunity and whether all kids are going to get off to a good start. So take a look at the Republican budget. The Republican budget cuts back on domestic violence shelters, cuts back on family planning, cuts back on Medicaid to help low income kids get off to a good start with a healthy mom. One half of the births in Illinois are paid for by Medicaid. When the Republicans in their budget cut back on money for those mothers and their kids, sadly it's going to cost us much more in the long run. We know across the board that seniors are better off because we focused on making their prescription drugs more affordable. And yet the Republicans in their budget would cut Medicare and the expansion of Medicare that we included in the Affordable Care Act. Isn't it just picture perfect that after 50 votes to eliminate the Affordable Care Act, the Republicans in their budget say, oh, of course, we want to elim eliminate it. We just want to keep all the revenue from the Affordable Care Act as part of our budget. The net result, 26 million Americans under the Republican budget. Many middle-income Americans are going to lose their health insurance. That's the Republican vision of the future. It's not a very solid vision for middle-income families. Mr. Schumer. Well, this week we're debating a budget in the Senate that showers special interests with tax breaks and other giveaways while leaving the middle class holding the short end of the stick. Our friends on the other side of the aisle are using fuzzy math and arithmetic acrobatics to try and paper over their disagreements over how extreme their budget ought to be. They're relying on more trickery and sleight of hand than David Copperfield. So today the DPCC has released a new report right here that details the lengths to which Republicans have gone in the House and Senate to hide the real effects of their budget. It makes clear that Republicans are rigging the rules against the middle class. They use dynamic scoring to try and convince people that tax breaks for the rich will reduce the deficit. It makes no sense. We know that. But somehow they're changing the way things work. Using dynamic scoring undervalues the economic boost that comes from investing in infrastructure to create middle class jobs. Second, the Republican budget requires CBO to use fair value accounting to estimate the cost of loan programs. 
That's the Republican way of jacking up the cost on the balance sheet of loan programs that help students, home buyers, and entrepreneurs, forcing cuts to programs that a majority of Americans support. So they use all this trickery to make it easier for the rich to pay fewer taxes and make it harder for the middle class to climb the ladder of up to success. Third, the House Republican budget puts taxpayers on the hook for future bailouts of the biggest financial institutions. Dodd-Frank included measures to ensure taxpayers wouldn't have to foot the bill if large financial institutions ran into trouble. The House budget repeals those protections. Fourth, Republicans in the House and Senate have placed a magic asterisk in their budget of over a trillion dollars. If you don't know what that means, don't feel bad. The Republicans don't either, because their budget says they'll tell the American people later which vital services they'd actually cut. Republicans refuse to say how much they'd cut scientific research or infrastructure or other middle class programs, but in order for their budget to add up, we know the cuts would be massive. And last but not least, as Senator Durbin mentioned, they repeal the ACA, but keep the savings generated by the law. A cynical attempt to have their cake and eat it too. The budget ought to make accountants of all political stripes blush. Simply put, Republicans are asking the American taxpayer to pay no attention to the man behind the curtain who's busy showering special interests with favorable tax breaks while putting a hammer to the middle class. Sam Well, as I have said many times, a budget is a lot more than just some numbers on a page. A budget is a statement of your values and priorities and the kind of nation we are and the kind of nation we want to be. For Democrats, that means that our budget should help us move towards an economy that is built from the middle out, not from the top down, and a government that works for all of our families, not just the wealthiest few. That's why I am so disappointed that instead of working with us to build a bipartisan budget, this Republican budget would be a giant step backwards. Instead of putting the middle class first, this Republican budget will cut taxes for the rich and leave working families behind. Instead of protecting seniors, this Republican budget includes major cuts to the programs they count on. Instead of putting jobs and economic growth first, this Republican budget cuts investments and goes back to the same old failed trickle-down policies that people across the country are frankly sick and tired of. So Democrats are going to make it clear where we stand this week. We're going to be offering amendments that lay out our values and priorities and shine a spotlight on theirs. We're going to be pushing for investments and policies that help our middle class families and our communities. And we are going to lay out a path to roll back the automatic cuts that Democrats and Republicans have both said are terrible policy, just like we did in our bipartisan uh, budget deal last year. So I'm hopeful that Republicans will work with us on that and not wait for another crisis to get the job done. Yes. What do you think of the, um, uh, the bipartisan House proposal on the doc fix, especially the um, abortion language, the, the Hyde Amendment abortion language on the community health centers? The FDR, we're told if a House works to their full efficiency, quote, um, unquote, um, we'll get it sometime late Thursday. They don't have a rule yet. The SGR is still a work in progress, and I personally am going to wait till we see it, um, having passed the House before we start speculating on what we need to do with it, if anything. Senator, your, your finance uh, Democrats have demanded four years of SGR reauthorization, not two. Are Democrats going to demand that? We're, uh, I believe that we should wait till we get what they've done in the House. Uh, from the time that the... the um, Finance members did this. There's been a lot of things going on. I believe that uh, four years as CHIP is the right thing to do. But let's talk about getting the bill over here first so we can take a look at it. But Senator Reid, do you not, isn't it fair to say you, you didn't like the abortion language? Have the, the, lang the language in, I met with a number of people today, senators and people from downtown. The two provisions in the two bills are different. They're not the same. Senator dealing Reed. Dealing with abortion. Senator Reid, do you have any comment on these reports that the Israelis have spied on uh, the negotiations, the P5 plus one with Iran? 
All the intelligence information I've gotten has come from America. Have, have you met with the Israeli ambassador about their view of the deal? I've met with the, the Israeli ambassador over the years, over the time he's been here, um, more than a year. And uh, we've heard his public, anything I've heard from him has been no different than his public pronouncements. They don't like the deal. Nevada and keeping a yes, schedule. I yes I am going home Saturday. Thank you. Thanks everybody.